going live. Yeah, it says. Thank you, Jack, for joining me today. I'm so honored to have you here. Yeah, of um, course. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Jack and I have been talking about social media and uh, podcasting for a few weeks. I met him at um, a networking in Troy, and I'm um, very impressed with Jack. He used to play high school and college basketball yep. and just really enjoyed kind of like, you know, doing some cool shots and uh, built a following. Mm -hmm. And so then actually decided to do YouTube and eventually TikTok um, and Instagram. And that's really comfortable for you now, right? Extremely no comfortable. big deal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> like yeah. you found your niche, your group. Yeah, YouTube, <laughs> podcasting, business. Yeah, I'm doing it so all So glad. Yeah. So I'm really happy that you founded uh, Youngblood Media because mm -hmm. I think that there's a huge need for people who understand podcasting yeah. from this side of the chair to actually um, help others who are just beginning because you don't know what your questions are until yeah. you start. And so um, I want to thank you for inspiring me to start. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so welcome. Yeah, because I think that it's uh, it's important to just, uh, you know, get ready and then do it because so yeah. many of us are perfectionists. Mm -hmm. You probably are too. How yeah. did you get over that first kind of like, all right, let's just do this? To be honest, I mean, it, it just kind of stemmed from me playing basketball in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of branched over to business where I just... I'm a risk taker. Yeah. I like taking risks. I have entrepreneur in my blood. Yes. And I like I wanna <laughs> live a great life that I'm proud of. Yes. And in order to do that, mm -hmm. sometimes I need to take the biggest risks, but yes. I just have to think that eventually it'll pay off. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it already has. Yeah. I mean, it's paid off a decent amount. I'd still like to keep growing. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like I'm at the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 22, so. Yeah, that's you, have, kinda, you have time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have a lot of time to do that. Yeah. So your brother also joins you on the podcast? Yeah, he, he is. Uh, soon he's going off to missions trips overseas, but wow. and then I'll be taking over the podcast, but oh he'll join whenever, whenever it's on that's yeah. amazing yeah. yeah absolutely is he a bit more introverted than you yeah is i would say he's a little bit more of the introverted one but i would say uh he's been getting in a church and he's become a lot more extroverted i'd still wow. say i'm the extroverted brother um wow. <laughs> but he, he's definitely the introvert i'm the extrovert i'm the athletic creative one he's yeah. the smart uh, Brady, kind of, yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. Like school, school is easy for him. Yeah, but school family's is... always been huge to me. My yeah. brother and I have always been super close. We've gotten even closer when we've grown up, and now that at, we're at the stage we're at, uh, yeah, no, family's always been super important to me. Even with my cousins, wow. they're like brother and sister to That's me. That's amazing. It's yeah. nice to have that family. Oh, you can't yeah. imagine your life without it, right? No, I couldn't imagine. Like so honestly, you... I've like sat back and thought, like, like. There has to be some reason that I was given the family that I have because I truly, truly, truly feel so thankful that I have I'm the so family glad. that I have because it's so a perfect glad. fit for me. Yeah. Like, I remember like a year and a half ago I was driving around and I thought to myself like – I couldn't imagine myself with a different family. Wow. Like, I really couldn't. It's so clear, right? It's just, yeah, like, I I love them all, and <laughs> it's just a perfect fit for me. Fit, perfect fit for me. So, yeah. of your mom and dad, who's the extrovert out of them? Ooh, my mom. 100%. <laughs> like, I get most of my mom's traits. My my brother gets most of my dad's traits. That's awesome. Like, especially with the blonde hair. <laughs> blonde, long hair is my mom's thing. <laughs> so, she must be really, they most must, must be very proud of you because, yeah. uh, you know what, it's a huge decision when you're in college and you're like, you know what, I'm not sure if I really need to complete this to do what I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. And my son's the same way. He, he was like, you know what, I don't think I really need to have this degree because I really see what I want to do. And I'm sure you're so glad you took that chance Oh yeah. because you literally do not need, you know, to go any further. And also you'll be teaching college graduates all your life exactly. with, hey, could you help me start a podcast? Yeah. Can you, you know, do this social media for me? Help start a business, all exactly. that stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm very glad that, you know, you take people on and that you will actually post for them, like say mm -hmm. once a month or whatever their schedule is. Uh, a lot more than that, but yeah. And that's right. And <laughs> yeah. so that's good because oh, yeah. you can kind of hone it to exactly what their brand message is mm -hmm. and then, you know, make something that's engaging and mm -hmm. then actually post it for them. And they reap the rewards of that yeah. reach and that that uh, kind of um, 
it's sort of a little bit fame, but not really fame. It's it's just, I guess, a consistent message mm-hmm. that's over time. And I guess uh, you're helping to build brand loyalty, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I'd say, like, what's your favorite part of, um, do you like, I know editing can be boring. Yeah, I it, can, it can be very oh tedious goodness, and boring. Oh, my goodness, right? But I've enjoyed doing <laughs> it. Uh, I enjoy the result of it. Very I good. Don't en- I enjoy making it. But I would say the result of it, it makes it worth it yeah. because it's, it's sometimes like hours, days, weeks, depending on what you're editing. Yeah. Like if I if I film a two hour, like the last podcast I filmed was two hours. Uh, if I film a two hour podcast, it takes about two to three times the amount of time to edit just that podcast. But wow. then there's there's also shorter form uh, right. versions of that podcast right. of like 10 minute videos, then make a thumbnail for that. Uh, short form with like YouTube shorts, TikTok, shorts and uh, Instagram reels, reels and, and all those that. take like an hour each time. And each podcast, I usually try to do maybe fourteen, and that's like fourteen hours when you wow. think about that. So it's you have like so a full time job. Yeah, yeah, it really is a full time job. But I think you were smart to start the media company because you know it's like what you've just learned. Sometimes you're the best teacher of yeah. that. You know, because you've just learned it, and you're like, oh, here, let me show you. Let yeah. me show you how this works. Exactly. And so by doing it, you know, so much like that's a lot of content so Mm -hmm. you must need terabytes of uh, of, content a lot of patience (laughs) a lot of patience but you've become patient yeah i've yeah you know in in some ways (laughs) some ways i'm not sometimes i am but yeah yeah but if you know you have okay uh this day i'm shooting this day i'm editing you know so you kind of plan out your weeks and i think you said sundays you kind of look at the next week Mm -hmm. And yeah. then plan like what you need to do. So, um, and you shoot uh, from your home, so you don't mm-hmm. have to go get studio time. No, nope. which no, is just really anytime helpful. I, want. I have the cameras, so the microphones. Uh, it's like a nice little setup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any advice for someone who's thinking about starting a podcast? Like, do you want to talk about? Um, I know you said you're a risk taker, and that is important because you have to at some point publish. Mm-hmm. So, if you were to start all over, um. Would you do anything differently or are you very glad with what you did do? And kind of just give us maybe some points about sort of like things to look for that are important um, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, if I were to start over, mm-hmm. I would say um, you just got to be prepared to put in a lot of hours and try to get on as many platforms as possible. That's good advice. Uh, yeah. Instagram, TikTok, U- YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, find a way to be on every platform so then you expand your reach. And That's then true. you have That's true. a higher chance to reach other people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because there's going to be people in different areas and if they're looking for something to watch, um, you know, and sometimes we just say, hey, what's a good podcast do you listen to on the way to work or whatever? Mm-hmm. So a lot of it is word of mouth. Um, but would you say that like your school friends and like your friend group, have they been very supportive? Oh, yeah. No, I, honestly, everybody's been supportive so in my glad. life. And I'm I try so to glad. keep a good positive uh, circle around me. Uh, I kind of learned that like growing up, like, I, you know, you naturally you come into like you come face to face with people that will either hate on what you're trying to do. Um, not support you, not be like a positive influence in your life. And I've kind of learned at this point that I try to keep the most positive people around as much as possible because they're going to play onto you. Like right. as like the more negativity you're taking in, the more negative the more negative you're going to be, mm-hmm. and the more negativity you're going to spread to others. So, and that's not what we're about at, no, all. Not at all. We're both like positive, kind of <laughs> exactly. happy people. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. It's like what we look like is what we are. Yeah. Like that's what we're like all the time. And so yeah. it's kind of nice that that um, that we can kind of like be careful about who's in our circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes I feel that when you're achieving something that maybe your you know your friend group is not really at yet because you know like what you're doing is incredibly. Um, it is, it's risky, but you've made such a success of it. And what I was thinking is that sometimes when one person does something extraordinary, some of the other ones who don't think they could ever do that kind of pull you down in a sense. Yeah. And so you begin to find out who are your real friends, Yeah. right? And then you can choose like who you want to spend time with. And um, we're just really lucky that um, that, you know, you keep gaining friends and mm-hmm. every time you go networking, you make new friends, like exactly. you're always, you know, meeting new people. 
And so you never have to worry about, I don't have any friends. That's never true. No. That's never true. No, honestly, it, it's not even that big of a deal of how many friends you have. It just matters on who your friends are. That's like, right. That's the, like, I would rather have five best friends that are there for me yeah. and positive and we're all like, we all click together than yeah. like a hundred people that are sometimes supportive, sometimes not, like a mix. Yeah. I would rather have like five close friends than a hundred ones that I don't really know that well. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that uh, like your, like some of your teachers and stuff, have you ever gone back to any of the teachers and like just to say, oh. hey, listen, I'm doing, because they would, they might want to see so like how well you're doing, right? I have, I have a funny story with them. My mom <laughs> went back to my high school at one point. I forgot why. Okay. And she ran into a few t- – oh, no, actually, it was at her church. Okay. Uh, she ran into a few of my high school teachers, and they went up to her. It was like a few months ago. So after I've been doing this business, podcasting, YouTube, like video months. creation, content mm-hmm. creation journey, mm-hmm. um, and they said, like, it's a, it's amazing how Jack's doing all of this. <laughs> Honestly, like, I think one of them said, like, I couldn't have seen Jack going to college. I kind of wow. saw him doing this route because I've always been Very this way. Good. I've always been, like – I want to be different from others. Like yeah. I want to live a different life than most. Yeah. And I've always kind of been a think out of the box person. I love I that. I haven't yeah. really, I was never designed for college. No. I really only went to college for basketball. Yeah. Like that's the only reason I always told everybody I would not go to college if I wasn't playing basketball. Right. And once I was ready to hang up basketball, that's when I dropped out. And then I've just started doing this and and way in a way, it's, it's kind of a blessing, isn't it? Yeah, because it is. you were able to see it. Do I like this or not? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, actually, no, I don't like it. That's yeah. exactly what I thought it was going to be. And it's not who I am. Oh, yeah. And maybe yeah. I don't need it. Yeah. And exactly. so that's why you've worked so very hard yeah. at creating this brand and this kind of empire because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, trying to create an empire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. um, it's it's amazing that sometimes you don't need a traditional route. And I think that, you know, people can truly decide. It isn't like you have to go to university, like, Mm -mm. you know, in our parents, like in your parents' day, right? There was like expectations. Yeah. And you were almost like looked upon like negatively if you don't immediately get a job that's a good job or whatever, or go to school. And, you know, a lot of time, like you go through three or four years of university and you still don't know what you want to be. Yeah. And we're going to change it like 10, 20, 100 times mm-hmm. before you're like retirement anyway. Yeah. The in- so it's a different world, right? Yeah. No, 100%. The interesting thing about our generation versus last generation yes. is that if somebody were to drop out, let's say like in the uh, – like maybe 30, 40 years ago, yeah. like, oh, they're going to live in their parents' basement the rest of their lives. They're r- throwing their life away. But now anytime anybody goes up to anybody and says, oh, I dropped out of college, my son dropped out of college, whatever, the question is, oh, really? Well, what, he's do- what is he doing now? Right. It's basically like a positive thing now. Yeah. Of, like, oh, well, that means that you know, he <laughs> dropped out of school, which means he's probably starting a business, right. probably doing something better with his life. Like exactly. they always have a plan. Right. And it's not for everybody, but I feel like the narrative has changed now with college dropouts that I now it's so. more of a positive thing than a negative thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you kind of find that one thing that you really want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you probably aren't going to find it in college because, you know, when you start a job, it isn't really until the first several weeks that you even know what it even feels like. Yeah. And so I'm in insurance. And so it takes a long time to be background checked. And then it takes ages more to kind of like learn the system Mm -hmm. and all that. So it can take really two months at a job before you actually know what the job is like. Yeah. And that's like a huge investment in, Mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing. And it's like that's – so you really don't know until maybe month three or four. Yeah. If you're even, you know, comfortable with it, if you like doing it. So – I think that um, things are different. Like you can make a decision um, sooner and if something's not for you, then maybe it it makes you go like in the pathway of something that is for you. Yeah. Right? Like I never knew I would do a podcast. I thought, well, I don't have anything to say. I'm not sure. Like what would my show be about? But everybody like has such wonderful things to teach me. That there's no shortage of, there's no problem. There's Mm -hmm. always someone that I'm finding. So today I talked to a guy and he is like an expert in this kind of personality uh, behavioral kind of system. It's called DISC. So it's like D-I-S-C. And so he can give you like a test and then you answer questions. And then he can tell you if you're like a dominant or if you're like kind of like a... (laughs) 
um, like a social kind of person mm-hmm. or if you really need to have like an engineering kind of brain. Mm-hmm. And then he gives that like to say a team and you can see how each person in that team, how they think and how to kind of relate to them. Yeah. Because like you want to talk to an engineer with facts, keep it concise, mm-hmm. clean, right? Yeah, exactly. And someone who's maybe a more social person, you can say how you feel mm-hmm. and yeah. what was that? You know what I mean? Exactly, like it's a yeah. different kind of way of uh, relating to people, but you can relate effectively, yeah. right? If you yeah. kind of know in a sense what language that person speaks kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And so um, it's just, I love that kind of thing. I love psychology. You probably love psychology too. No, I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I it's I so interesting, right? I psychology stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big conspiracy theorist, and like yeah. I just like thinking outside of the box. Absolutely, yeah, psychology interests me a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. you had some shows on. I think you had like a Secret Service agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That must have been interesting. A what was that like? Secret Service agent. Former it was. It was awesome. <laughs> I had a lot of fun filming that episode. Uh, we only got him to say uh, like, like a little he, bit. Like, oh, no comment once. <laughs> We thought it was going to happen way more often. Yeah, absolutely. He was absolutely. a friend of my dad's, and he was an awesome guy. Uh, wow. He was able to tell us a lot about what went on, like, behind the scenes and stuff. Uh, not too much, obviously, nothing that would get him in trouble. Yeah. But he got to talk about um, the different presidents he was under. Wow. And he was in the Secret Service for 22 years. So, so several presidents. Yeah, several. Uh, I think it was Reagan, Bill Clinton, uh, both Bushes. Mm-hmm. That's a I'm, long I, I don't time. know if I'm missing one. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's a pretty that's a pretty big range, yeah. isn't it? Oh, and yeah. And different personalities. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But he, so... he worked, like, in the White House. He was, like, one of the, like, the wow. top people. Yeah. So he worked a lot with the vice presidents. Mm-hmm. He said that, like, when Al Gore was vice president, he yeah. worked with him a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's an amazing job, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. And especially because my brother and I love talking about conspiracies. Yes. Especially with, like, the government sometimes. <laughs> It was really fun to get his opinion on some stuff. Totally. And yeah. he was able to tell you, like, hey, this is what it seemed like to me. Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. There's also a gentleman that um, I think he went somewhere else. Was it for basketball uh, kill um, or something? There's huh? a person's. Um... Oh, yeah. Ben Kiel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, my yeah, trainer. Yeah. He was right. my basketball he was trainer, trainer and lifting trainer back wow. in the day. Oh, yeah. so it must have been nice to have him on the show. He was awesome. He lives in LA now. He's uh, actually chasing the content creation journey, too. Oh, my God. But yeah, so he. He used to play overseas basketball, uh, played in some G League games, which are wow. uh, the league below the NBA. That's amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, he, that's a lot to get there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. He basically, I give him credit to me playing college basketball because he was like the biggest reason to why I was able to make it that far. Oh, wow. And uh, in my lifting, like in my fitness journey, he, um, when I met him the ne- the the next summer after I met him, uh, I was super skinny as a kid, like super, <laughs> super skinny, could never gain weight. I was playing basketball so much. And then once he taught me, he used to be a professional bodybuilder. Wow. So he knew how to train people in both basketball and uh, lifting. Mm-hmm. And I was able to gain that's 25 crazy. pounds of muscle in one summer. Okay, that's crazy. And now I'm like, now I'm kind of evening out. Like I'm doing my own thing. I know how to uh, teach other people fitness and do it on my own. Wow. And it's all through him. Like he, he's like one of the most influential people in my life. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, did you ever visit him overseas, or was it just too mm-hmm. far? Yeah. I actually, oh no, I did, did know him when he was playing overseas. Did you talk to him on the phone or anything? Uh, yeah, I would, did like, you text him every now and then. Very but I was good. going through high school; he was going through overseas basketball, so we were both busy with our things. We would text each other like a good amount of times. I don't remember. That's awesome. I, it was. It's been a while. He stayed in touch, right? Yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He played wow. in Mongolia, Iceland. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> he, he's a big name in Asia. He's a big name in Asia because oh, wow. Asian basketball players in America are not that common, like right. professional ones. It's unusual. So when he would go back to Asia, people would be asking for his autograph and everything. I'm like, <laughs> oh wow, God. dude, you really are famous. <laughs> <Wow>. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you happy for him because oh, yeah, he deserves 100%. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wishing the best for him moving forward. Uh, he moved to LA. He's trying to chase the content creation journey, like I said before. And I wish all the best for him. Uh, trying to help him a little bit because. Uh, like so, give him some of my tips. Maybe yeah. even like make some content for him. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. What's so, he interested in? Like, does he have a sort of a, a, a broad topic that he wants to talk about? Or, um, um, I would say his niche is mainly around fitness and a little bit of basketball. But I think he's mostly fitness still. 
And then he makes some like uh, like joking content and stuff like that, like on Instagram and TikTok. He has a great sense of humor. He hasn't gone on YouTube yet. Oh but, my god! Yeah, he has a good sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even though in high school I never really would see him laugh or joke around at oh all. Oh my goodness! But one thing that he said is like moving out to LA definitely got him out of his comfort zone. And oh he's, my god! Uh, yeah, he changed his personality around a little bit, but I like wow. it. Wow! It was yeah. weird seeing him again when I when I hadn't seen him in like a year when we had him on the podcast. Yeah. And it was funny seeing him out of his shell because. <laughs> Yeah, it's he was so a completely unusual. different personality. You're like, yeah. you know, like you're like a different person, yeah. right? And that's awesome because you always knew that there was this fun person inside. Yeah. And it's so great that he gets to kind of share it with the world because, exactly. you know, L.A. is all about, you know, kind of promoting yourself in a way. Yeah. And yeah. so has I he would gone never to... be able to live there. <laughs> <laughs> I would never be able to. It's just so expensive. It's expensive. And I feel like it's extremely toxic. And I told him about that. And he knows, like, I think everybody knows that. I think everybody knows if that. if you yeah. do want like a good <laughs> step towards making it on social media I would say moving to LA is a huge thing wow it's something that I'm just not willing to do I'm like I'm okay going a different path yeah uh, other people have done it but LA just isn't for me it's so saturated I can't do it well and do they have like um agents perhaps who would say I'm not going to talk to you unless you have like 20,000 followers mm-hmm. do you think that's a thing oh 100 yeah so like is- uh, agents brand ambassador programs uh a lot of life is based on followers now. Followers, likes, views. Uh, I don't like that personally. Yeah. I, I'm i trying to gear towards making content that like is actually valuable because a lot of people right. make content that's not as valuable and sometimes makes our society even worse. Yeah. And I don't like seeing those people like all over the internet influencing a bunch of kids growing up and totally. everything because totally. I think our generation is starting to get into a very dark place. Yeah. With, like, and it doesn't uh, have to. It doesn't have to. It really yeah. doesn't. And yeah. like the couple of us that, you know, want to actually, you know, want things to be peaceful and kind of nice. Like, yeah. I feel like it feels like we're in the minority and we probably yeah. aren't, but I don't like that it feels like that. No, I don't, I don't like, like it either. That, like, that makes I, me like, ooh, you know, we got to step up our game a bit. Exactly. Because, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of social media has influenced a lot of, especially like my generation, yeah. to uh, drink, smoke, uh have sex over with girls indulge or guys. with things, yeah. Like, yeah, overindulge. overindulge with those things that just aren't worth it. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's so much more to life than trying to chase that stuff, going yeah. to clubs every weekend and getting drunk and everything. I've never been about that life. I, I genuinely want a good life for myself. And anytime I've gone out to the club with my friends, I get bored. I'll yeah. go on my phone. I'll start <laughs> making videos or go on like my business page or something. I've literally done that in the middle of the club because I'm not having fun. Like fun to me is going out, uh, just doing something fun. Hiking. Yeah. Uh, even going to like, it was just Halloween, like a corn maze or something. Like that's fun. That's fun. I'd rather do that than go to a club. Wow. Yeah. That's so, it's crazy because I think uh, the girls would come up and talk to you and all that, but you'd probably um, be like, oh, I'm not really that interested, I'm right? I'm a very shy person when I'm at Are the you club. really? Uh, it's yeah, so funny. I've had girls come up to me and comment my hair and I've just been oh thank you and then, keep and then, walking, and then and I'll be like, just like was she trying to hit on me I know I know it's true <laughs> like I won't really think about it until after yeah. that's so but funny even then I don't really it doesn't really matter to me because I'm not really looking for a girl that goes to a club very often I'm looking for right a girl that's very like determined in life and has like good positive morals not that every person that goes out doesn't it's just a lot of the majority of people don't yeah like especially if you go to like college no, 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 no. I know just, some people yeah. that go to college just to party. Yeah. And I can't understand that. You like, didn't, right? No, definitely not. Oh, wait, like party in college? When, yeah, like when I, you I went did. to college, you, Occasionally, you went to parties. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't wow. enjoy it. I, so it's not your I, nature. I would leave the bar and club sometimes. Like I remember <laughs> oh some of my goodness. friends would call me and be like, Jack, where'd you go? I'm like, I'm outside walking on the sidewalk. <laughs> I got bored. I'm just walking around. <laughs> like God. I just, I needed to cool off. I yeah. Guess. Like I don't. Yeah. It's not you weren't happy. Yeah. That wasn't your, you know, it's not your vibe. Like, it's just no, you know, it's probably nicer to talk to people in a book club or mm-hmm. a library or something like that rather yeah. than a club. Coffee because shop or anything. Yeah, because I, I think you're like, you're you're kind of deep and, yeah. and you're not going to hang out with anyone who's shallow. No, I'm not. It's just not interesting. I can tell you the reason why I remember in college why I left the bar a few times was because... I would stand around and I don't really dance or anything like that. I'm not good at it. And I'm six foot five, so I stand out. So if I'm dancing bad, You're it'll, stand, it'll stand out. Though. But um, like I would oh stand God. around and look and I would see some of the guys, yeah. the looks on their face when they mm. look at girls. Mm-hmm. And 
the way I try to think about girls is like they have parents. Like, what if I had a daughter that was there and oh had my guys gosh, looking so at had guys looking at my daughter <laughs> like, like that. that? It it legitimately got me mad. Like yeah, at I can some imagine. points, I would get upset where they would look at a girl as if they were like an object. Right. And it would just it would disgust me. You have, it really would. You have a lot of compassion, though. I think you have a like, and maybe it's your parents too. I think yeah, that they've they actually right. really they yeah. really did, and so. It's great, though, because I feel like you're not going to be wandering down the wrong paths because of your judgment, because yeah. of your standards for yourself. Yeah. And that's like you're saving yourself like decades yeah. with not going down the wrong path, being yeah. with the wrong person. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I have hiccups. Like I'm not perfect. Nobody oh, sure, is. Sure. Uh, but I like to think that I can see those flaws in myself and that's a step above a lot of people who see that as yeah. a positive thing. I see it as a negative thing, and I fix it. I yeah, try to fix exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Because you have say over some things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And definitely. Uh, there's a, and you can always say to your friends because they know you and you trust, like they trust you. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, listen, do you think I do this? And then they can, you know, after a couple of them, if they're like, no, I, ne I've never seen, yeah. never seen that at all. Like, don't yeah. worry about it, bro. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you can just say, oh, okay, good, we're good. You oh, know. Yeah. Um, but I feel like. Um, you know, the next year for you, uh, it's going to be it's going to be amazing because I think that you've already built up like the business, mm -hmm. like you're kind of like in a good place I feel because really you place. can add to what you have yeah. without being overwhelmed, without overcommitting. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, you're going to go really strong uh, into 2024. And I'm looking forward to your um, the show coming, you know, the podcast. Uh, I appreciate being, it. Yeah. yeah I if feel you want. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. So is it pretty easy to come up with um, re like like topics for the show? Is it pretty easy? Um, Honestly, I don't even come up with topics. It's just based on the person. Like if wow. I have somebody who played basketball, yeah. uh, maybe talk a little bit about basketball. But the reason that we have such a laid back uh, like couch setup at home yeah. is because it's meant to just be a conversation. Like when I had Ben Keel on, um, we he literally said at one point, he was like, I thought it was going to be like all structured and just these <laughs> Not questions and like an interview. <laughs> he's like, you know, it's been like an hour and a half and we're just chilling, talking. Exactly. Like, like as if the cameras weren't here. That's right. what I love about it. That's like that's awesome. Yeah, I don't even think about topics, no questions. I just let the conversation flow. Right. Like, however it's supposed right. to. Right. And yeah. I think that you, you ask questions that the audience would want to know. Anyway, just mm -hmm. because of natural curiosity, yeah. um, you know, and so I think you're not really, yeah, like me too. Like, I like it to be like, hey, it's just, we're just chatting mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> by the fire that doesn't exist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you get but that I, at one point. Yeah. I know. I think I have to do like <laughs> a, a virtual campfire. one. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. A little fireplace. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I just like, I like the, the idea of fireside chat. It just kind of sounded cozy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I agree. And so um, I really like that I can check in with you if there's something I'm thinking of doing. Like, you know, like I kind of did the D&D kind of gaming thing. Yeah. We want to do that again. Um, but I wasn't sure, you know, should I do that as a separate thing or just have it under this one umbrella? And I think you would probably say just just keep going, have it yeah. under this umbrella and don't worry about it. Yeah, I would say like do a little bit less thinking about it. Just do it. Like do what you love. Yeah. Yeah. Do what you love and eventually you're going to figure out what you want going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're It'll supposed be, to go through like, those little hiccups and uh, it's, it's just a it's a part of your journey of figuring out what you really want to do. That's right. Yeah. I'm just glad that I found this, though, because for many years, I like have these kind of coil notebooks, and I've always sort of, it's as if I'm writing some book in the future. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like writing something about, you know, I don't know, healing or whatever in the past, um, I would be like saving this. Like for all these years, I've saved like, I don't know, 18 coil notebooks of oh, ideas. Wow. And I always thought, oh, maybe I'll write someday. But now, because this is available to us, I kind of like that I don't have to write something. I can just... Talk about it. Yeah. And then people can respond and people can say, oh, I never thought about that. And where did you get this or whatever? And so it's kind of a conversation in a way yeah. because uh, people can ask questions and um, you just kind of go from there. So I feel like it's not really going to be a book, <laughs> which is nice because <laughs> yeah. like you have to really set aside like a year of your life. Yeah. And every day, right. You have to like make yourself right. Yeah. And so I'm kind of glad that, you know, that doesn't have to be the way to yeah. put like, you know, kind doesn't of accumulated be. wisdom into um, a form that you can put out into the world. I think yeah. that this is this is good for a lot of people because, 
you know, yeah, there is no script and you have people that, you know, come on that can teach us about things. Yeah. And so um, I was really glad that you were able to consult with me about just starting, you know, my podcast. Yeah. And uh, telling me, you know, yeah, you should definitely go on Apple and Spotify and, you yeah, know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because then it's, and, and Linktree, you told me about Linktree. Can yeah. you tell me about Linktree? Because so I forgot about Linktree what Linktree is an uh, app where you can put all of your socials, any links that you want in one place. Okay. So you put in your Instagram bio, someone clicks on it, and they see they can see anything you put on there. Any link that you want, any social media you want. It's just an all-in-one, like, it's a it's a really it's, good app. It's like a hub or something, right? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people use it on social media and business. So you can have your website connected to mm -hmm. it. So they hit one button and they go right to your website? Right to it, yeah. Okay, so that's really good because yeah. then people don't have to try to write down an address and all that. Exactly. People don't want to do that. They yeah, just want no, to hit a button. Yeah, no, just click the button and it can be used <laughs> in a QR code, which I use on my business cards too. That's really so good. So then you just scan it, boom. Wow. Tree, this is all my stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, By the way, I think if you I see me do look do down that. at my phone, I'm trying to get the Instagram story to load. Of it course. Still hasn't yet. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it takes a while, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit. Well, it's, it's, it's just based on the Wi Fi connection. So okay. I'm just leaving my phone open. So yeah, absolutely. Floating. Because yeah. we want it to actually load. I didn't want load. you thinking I was like texting anybody <laughs> or anything. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, I'm no, he's bored. No, actually, I'm really enjoying our conversation. I hope you are too. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, there's so much you can teach us. And, uh, uh, because like your attitude is is really positive and you're not afraid to try something and I think you were kind of ahead um with the podcast and stuff like that like it's it's sort of really gaining um kind of like uh what's the word like um what's that word I'm trying there's a certain word uh threshold it's it's okay. it's it's like there's a certain tr threshold where a lot more people are looking into it or doing yeah. it I feel like you were before that I feel like there wasn't as many podcasters when you started. So was that a year or two ago? It was January. Yeah. I started the podcast what? with my brother in January and the business also. In of January. this year? Yeah, this year. Okay. Yeah. Why did I think you were in it like for years? Because that's no. a lot of content. Yeah, no, it is. It's a lot of, like I said before, <laughs> oh, wow. it takes a lot of time. <laughs> oh, and then I'm also God. doing the business stuff on top of that. And still learning like new business skills and all of that. So wow, it's just wake up early, go to sleep late. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. look at but how I much you're achieving. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you are kind of living your dream, really, because yeah. uh, you get to do what you love. Yeah, I'm living in the process right now. The process of the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you at all interested in what AI could do? Yeah, or, I've yeah. been using ChatGPT sometimes. Very good. Yeah, like in the business I do, sometimes to write descriptions. If you need like a detailed description. Oh, that's a great uh, idea. ChatGPT will make it. Yeah, you just have to describe it right. And obviously I don't just copy and paste it. I yeah, definitely not. I review it a little bit before, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking about, you know, it's a very good idea generator, Yeah. ChatGPT, because you could say, you know, give me 15 something, um, you know, about this topic. And... I, I, I watched this training, and what they were doing is they were describing a product. So say it was like some kind of artisanal cheese or something, mm -hmm. and they uh, were talking about like where this kind of shop was and kind of the demographics of that location, right? Yeah. And so ChatGPT came up with a kind of a persona and inside of that, there's a platform, uh, DAL-E, so D-A-L-L -L kind of E. And you can ask dal -E, this is all that I know about my customers. And DAL-E will come up with an actual, like, graphic picture of oh, what wow. you're, yeah, yeah, like exactly what that person looks like. And the interesting thing is you're going to know what podcasts they listen to. How long do they commute to work? How many children they have? Uh, you know, did they go to university or whatever? Like there's this huge kind of list of what that person um, is like. And so then you can say, because they know all this information about who your kind of ideal client is, mm -hmm. then you can say, write me a podcast script, write me a YouTube video, oh, write yeah. me, right? Yeah. And then, and all of that is taken into account. Yeah. And so it's amazing that mm -hmm. there's all these data points that can be combined oh, yeah. to be incredibly targeted for marketing. 
And uh, it's just kind of nice to know what's possible. Oh, yeah. No, it's a little bit scary. Cause yeah, it's, it's a little scary. It's like, it's a little too smart. Like, it's what? a little bit too smart. <laughs> and then on. if we start making them into, like, human-like things, it's going to become a movie. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, but I think it's good that for people to kind of niche down a bit and and have an idea of where is your kind of podcast or what you're putting out where is it going to land mm-hmm. and who's going to be looking for it? And so how can I make it easy to find? Like you don't just put out content. That's what I find about you. Like you actually put out content for an audience mm-hmm. and it's always growing. Absolutely. But you kind of have an idea of who you're talking to, who you're yeah. marketing to. Yeah. How important is that instead of just scatter shot and extremely. just like putting something out? Yeah. Extremely. Niching is extremely important in social media. Uh, sometimes you can, uh, stray out to try to get other people, but you'll see any like YouTubers, for example, uh, if they're into pranks, they're going to stick to pranks. Yeah. If they're into podcasting, they're going to stick to podcasting on that channel specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, if they're in fitness, they're only going to really stick to fitness and maybe make a personal brand, but they would make a whole different account for that. Wow. So like right now, the three biggest niches, uh, to grow an audience as big as people want it is, um, Health, wealth, and relationships. Wow. Uh, right now, I'm choosing to go a little bit into health, like health. show off my fitness because I work yeah. out six times a week. <laughs> uh, don't like, don't have a lot of wealth yet. I'm, I'm not in a relationship, so I'm like health. Yeah, I mean, I work out six times a week. Anyway, yeah, so why don't I try you have to make a lot something to of it? teach. You know, yeah. you have a lot to to talk about too, and and also you can talk about things that are challenges. Like you want to be truthful and realistic, right? Like yeah. you're not someone trying to be a certain way for your audience. Like you're just yourself. Yeah. And so you can say, oh my gosh, like that leg day really killed me last exactly. week. Or whatever, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you know you're very like authentic. Oh yeah. No, I love being my true self and i feel like more people need to do that on the internet i think so too. they try to like make a like put a mask on in, on the internet to try to get as much influence as possible but sometimes it can turn out uh against someone's favor I yeah would say. yeah yeah exactly or like do things because uh the general public thinks that something should be said like i know a lot of influencers that um like they would say a whole nother thing if the camera wasn't turned on wow so yeah. So they're not really being true to themselves then. No, no but there's a lot of money involved. Yes, involved, so, there is. Yeah. There is, yeah. So do you think affiliate is a good idea or do you think like sponsorship or would you – is there a way to do both? How do you feel about that? Like do you think that that's worth going after? Like, I would say it's worth going after. Very good. Yeah, like, I, good. like I – affiliate marketing is um, – it's not as saturated yet. Okay. So I think it, it is a good option to go into. Especially if you're building your audience. Exactly. Right? Yeah. If you're building your audience, you would want to go into that. And it's also a good way of making passive income. At least that's what I've seen. Okay. Yeah. Would you have a YouTube merch shelf on your YouTube Eventually, channel? Eventually, I would like to. I'm trying to, <laughs> once the podcast gets enough of an, of an audience, I yeah. want to start selling merch. That's but awesome. Most of the brands to um, supply it, I want to like have a relationship with the supplier. That's awesome. I haven't awesome. been able to find that yet at a cheap price. I found like a few around our area and they were like, you have to buy 50 at a time. And I'm like, I can't guarantee that 50 people would buy it. Yeah, I right. I don't want to exactly. go like $1,000 in a debt. And right, like, I don't want to spend that much money right now. No, because yeah. it's such an unknown. I have all the prints and everything ready, like the designs of like the merch for the podcast. Wow. I'm excited for that to eventually be released, but it's not something I can uh, that I want to afford yet. Is there yeah. any way that um, you could have a print-on-demand company work with um, kind of like a podcasting channel so we don't have to know in advance, okay, I need to buy 50 to put this T-shirt on my page? Like, it, is yeah. there such a thing as, like, say, like, as people order a baseball cap, like, mm-hmm. or a T-shirt, that they make it? Is is that even possible or not? There are some, but I don't love those because you can't guarantee the quality because it's going okay. directly from the supplier to the customer. And oh, I would like not, to see it. Yeah, I would like to see it before it and feeling it. Right? I actually used to do that with my old YouTube channel, and 
Uh, at first, I liked the stuff, but then they must have changed something. I'm not going to say the name of it because I yeah, don't know about them. Yeah. But, uh, they changed something about the material, and then they changed, uh, like, a few of, like, the logos were, like, off or, like, that's, tilted. And I'm like, that's like okay, not I, can't, even... I can't sell this. <laughs> no. So that's when I'm like, okay, I have to do it from supplier to me to customer. Right. Because I need to see it. I want to see it anyways. Like, I want to be able to see it. You like, want to be proud of it. going out the door. Yeah. yeah I would like, to, yeah, it would, I would be proud of it. Plus, then I can add, like, a little message in yeah, it and stuff like that. That is nice. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Have more of like a relationship with your audience, like mm-hmm. selling the merch that are literally willing to pay their hard earned money. Yeah. To, That's a big deal. To buy your stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, exactly. It's, uh, it's like, is there anything that you're thinking of doing with the podcast that you haven't done yet, but that you're sort of thinking you might evolve into in the future? Or is there like a couple topics you're thinking about maybe talking about uh, when you go back? you know, to Mm -hmm. launching. Um, Is there any kind of changes that you'd want to make or um, would you just continue? Because you don't have to really make any changes. Honestly, I don't think I would change much. I mean, it would be cool to eventually get like more of a, like studio setup, but I would want it to look pretty much the same. I would also love these microphones. I'm so uh, glad. Because, like, I That's have... That's awesome. Like, so I have the Rode Pod mics. Yeah. And I think those are, like, the second best, and then these Shure mics are the best ones. Really? I've seen them on all podcasts. Yeah. They're just expensive. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a like, lot, right? I think the ones I have are, like, half the price of this. <laughs> oh, I was like, you know what? They're still really good audio. I'm just not going to spend that. Yeah, I, was I know. spending a lot on cameras, the couches, the, the audio recording setup and everything, so... Did yeah. you have a really cool um background it was like kind black of brick great i love the it's, look uh, of that it's literally just pasted on the wall it's awesome yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. like a studio like I it like looks it like a lot. something like i like the look and then the <laughs> thumbnails uh some of the thumbnails have a black brick background yeah it's hard to notice because there's so much uh going on on the thumbnails but yeah. there is a little black brick in the back to kind of represent like the theme of the podcast. Wow. So it kind of relates a little bit. So Young Blood Squared, um, mm-hmm. yeah, like did you guys come up with the idea together to name it? Um, I I remember I came up with the name. I forgot who came up with making a podcast. It might have been me, but honestly, I don't even think either of a, either my brother or I would remember. But I do remember I came up with it because I was like, there's two of us, <laughs> Young Blood Squared. Why I think not? it's so logical, exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Plus, it's kind of like, I feel like it's a catchy name, like the Young yeah. Blood Squared podcast. It just rolls off the tongue for me. I haven't screwed up saying it yet. That's good. And sometimes I screw up saying words, like, <laughs> as I'm rambling on or like trying to like script something. Mm-hmm. And every single time, I'm like, welcome back to the Young Blood Squared podcast. And I'm like, it's so yeah, it's easy, easy to, to say. say. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I think it's a great name, too. Yeah, thank you. So did you always have uh, your name on your jersey? Do you have any jerseys from the past that you kept that say Youngblood on them? Um, Basketball? I had shooting uniforms that said Youngblood on them. Wow, what's that? Uh, um, like the shirt that you wear in warm-ups. Oh. Like over the jersey. Okay. Yeah. That's so a I had shooting some of uniform. those, but <laughs> yeah, no, in high school and college, we didn't have the last names on the back of our jerseys. Okay. We weren't, yeah, I didn't go D1. So, <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> is there anything, uh, is there any place you'd like to visit, um, and maybe even to get ideas for shows and things like that? Um, is there somewhere you'd like to travel to, um, in the next few years? Is there something that you think, oh, that'd be kind of cool to go there? No, I'm a huge traveler. I've always loved traveling. I didn't know that. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, no, I love it. I've been to 42 out of 50 states so far. Oh, my God. That's amazing. I'm planning to hit 50 (laughs) by the end of next year. I want to. Wow. Uh, But I actually haven't been out of the country that much. Like, Mm -hmm. the only place I've been, like, I've been to a bunch of the Caribbean, Mexico, Canada, obviously. Yep. Um, And then I've been to Britain. That was what, like, Lucky. when I was like 11. How was it? And I, it was awesome. Oh, God. But I really want to go back to <laughs> Europe and I want to, I want to travel all around the world. I awesome. really do. But my plan first is to make enough money to where I'm just completely comfortable doing right. that. Where I don't even think about it, have some passive income in the background. Yes. And be able to travel while I'm still making money. That's right. And that's right. the whole beauty to social media is you can make the money while you're traveling. It's a whole just, different world, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, like, you don't have to re- like clock in, clock out, <laughs> no, whatever. God. You can just make money as you're going. <laughs> and I'm 22, so I'm planning like hopefully by 25, I'll be at that state. Right. And then I'll travel the world before I'm married, have kids and all that. I'll still yeah. do it when I have a family. But totally. It'll I would just be say, different places. It'd be like Harry Potter world or yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. But back to your question, I would say the number one place I think I want to go to in the world um, – Australia? It's tough. Like I'm trying to... No, I would say maybe Norway. Um, wow. Is your during... family from... Oh, no. Uh, actually, we're I'm 40% German. 
young oh blood. Young goodness. blood used to be young blood or <laughs> something like wow. that. But that was like young hundreds blood. of years ago. Uh, <laughs> but no, we're like a few. I think we're like. German, British. Yeah, uh, I was thinking maybe British. Maybe a little bit Irish. I know we're a tiny bit French. It's just a few. Like Scottish, uh, a few maybe? Polish. Polish uh, for sure. Okay. I don't think Scottish. I'm okay. not sure, though. More Irish than Scottish, yeah? I'm not even sure if it's Irish. It's either <laughs> Irish or Scottish. It's Actually, it's one, or, it's one, not the other. It's either Irish or Scottish. I forgot. Not both. Not both. I right. forgot, though. But, yeah, I would say maybe, like, Norway or Switzerland. Ooh, no, Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland 100%. <laughs> so I many people about rave about Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, I'm planning to go there soon. Like <laughs> next year, I really want to fly to like the cheapest country to fly to. So yes, that's super cheap. Exactly. And then take the train everywhere and stay yeah. in hostels. That's and then amazing. <laughs> From basketball, oh I actually have a lot of friends overseas, so I could stay at some of their places, Aww. and they've offered. Like I, I know uh, some so friends nice. from Spain, Romania, Britain, Finland. Uh, That's a lot of places. Germany. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, I would like so I would travel there, so stay with money. them, stay at hostels, <laughs> and not have to spend that much. And yeah. food there is is cheaper if you really look. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, and you're pretty healthy eating, right? Oh, like yeah, you're I'm a very healthy. healthy eater. Sometimes I'll <laughs> cheat with some Taco Bell. We all do. Oh, it's yeah, like 100%. life is not worth living if we can't have fun exactly. things. <laughs> yeah, no, but I love eating healthy, even though like sometimes it doesn't feel like you're eating healthy yeah. in, in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have a certain diet that you're kind of um, sort of experimenting with, or have you found something that really works for you and you're just like yeah, going uh, with it? So I've been doing a lot of meal prep lately um, where I'll, Very good. I work out from Monday through Saturday every week. Sunday is my rest day. And I'll make either some kind of pasta dish with chicken. It's always with chicken. Pasta dish, rice and chicken. So you're always getting burrito, protein. Yeah. And I'll make six at a time, like six portions. That's awesome. And then I'll warm it up in the morning, have it ready by the time I am about to go to the gym. Good. Wait about an hour, take pre-workout, go work out. Uh, come back, take the protein, then get back to work. Wow. Yeah. So, like, so your muscles are being fed. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Every I've single day. I've a lot of not... like, results from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Recently, I got wow. into pre-workout and creatine like a month ago. And I always kind of strayed that? away from that stuff. It scared yeah. me. But honestly, I've loved it. I've wow. loved it ever since. It gives me a lot more energy, a lot more focus. Um, That's amazing. You see yeah, a difference. It makes my workouts way better, I would say. Yeah. Do you listen to a podcast when you're working out or do you listen to music? Music. Yeah, music. Sometimes I'll call friends, uh, but I will say my workouts aren't as productive when I'm on the phone. <laughs> uh, actually, well, no, if I'm talking about business, then yes, which like 50% of the time I'm talking about business. Uh, but I like listening to music at the gym a lot. That's yeah. awesome. It kind of motivates you a bit to kind of, it does. you know, like yeah. if you get, there's a certain beat too, like you might exactly. need something. Do you work with weights? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I do all lifting and then I'll do some core at the end with some cardio, oh, God, but not core. that much. Yeah. Don't we hate core. <laughs> I, oh, I don't mind it. You don't mind it? I don't it. mind it that You must much. have a strong core. I don't do core. a lot of it. I don't do a lot of it. I do a little bit of that at the end and then a little bit of cardio, but mainly lifting. Like wow. mainly uh, chest, shoulders, arms, back. Uh, I don't really like doing legs that much. I'll do it once a week. I don't think anybody likes yeah. doing legs. You have to, I guess, at you some point. You kind of have but... to. Yeah. <laughs> it's my least favorite. I feel like with, with guys, it's the least favorite muscle. Then with women, it's the favorite because women are usually stronger lower body. And That's then men true. are stronger upper typically body, right? upper body. Yeah, typically. that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So what age were you when you first started walk working out? Uh, like high school I, I was 14 or, or 15. 14, That's a good 15, age. That's a good uh, age, yeah. started getting more serious with it when I met my trainer when I was 16. Yeah. Did you become tall all at once? No. Were I was you... always a tall kid. <laughs> I was always a tall kid, but I would say my biggest growth spurt was like from 5'8 to 5'11 in oh eighth grade. God. And then I was like six foot one by ninth grade. Wow. And then six foot five by senior year. Oh yeah. my God! Is and your dad I'm tall too, five. or no? Nope, he's five foot nine. No, oh, that's so funny. My brother is five foot eight, so that actually makes sense. But my mom is five <laughs> foot eight, so my mom's a taller woman. Mm -hmm. But still, that doesn't five nine five nine guy five eight woman does not produce a six, six foot five kid. No, that's incredible. <laughs> I don't have a lot of height in my family either. Like my second cousin is like six seven, but he's a second cousin. Wow. There's no way I got that. Yeah, from that's kind of crazy. And exactly. no grandparent, like, because sometimes it'll no. skip a generation or something. No, I don't not know really. how tall my grandparents were, but I don't. Well, so I have one grandma still living. Yeah. Uh, I knew my mom's mom before she passed away when I was younger. Uh, she wasn't that tall. 
my grandma now is not tall. She's like five foot. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how tall my grandpas were. One uh, got divorced. Um, he wasn't like a great person. He was my mom's dad. Okay. And then uh, the other one got into an accident. Aww. He didn't. And then he passed away a few years ago, but the accident didn't make him pass away. Right. But he wasn't right. able to uh, basically, I don't know if I should go into much detail because it's kind of private, but like sure. basically That's something good. happened with his brain where he couldn't uh, process time enough. That's and, hard. Yeah. That's so, really hard. Yeah. So yeah. my dad grew up with a single mother, um, with his sister, uh, my aunt. So, uh, but that's I have a lot of respect so for my close. grandma though. My grandma's yeah. where I get a lot of my entrepreneurship from because she built a lot of companies when she was younger and built she, companies. Yeah. She, I think she's owned like five, <laughs> five companies. She's I think unbelievable, she actually, she sold isn't she? Like, that's unbelievable. Yeah, no, I, I look up to my grandma a lot. <laughs> and she set our entire family up for, like, like very, Good. very well. Good. To be able to have that's the lives that we want to have. Amazing. I yeah, texted her last amazing. year when I was on my, like, road trip um, that I, like, like, I don't know. I was just having, like, one of those moments. And I was like, thank you for everything that you did. You oh set me, Josh, my cousins up for a great life at, like, we're happy to be your grand, your Aww. grandchildren. So. Yeah, and I'm and glad I'm, that you kind of <laughs> carried the torch for um, entrepreneurship, and yeah. you know, because it it's true. I feel like <laughs> there's a book. It's called the E Myth, like M Y T H okay. Myth. Yeah, and it's kind of a famous book. Um, and so the guy says that just because you're a good plumber or you're a good, you know, anything that you do, doesn't mean that you're going to be a good business owner. Mm -mm. Yeah. And so he's like. It's almost like having an entrepreneurial seizure. Yeah. And once the seizure is over, then exactly. it's like, okay, yeah, I don't, I don't want to run a business. Exactly. I'm good, right? Yeah. So it's interesting thinking about that. But yeah. it's such a great time to no, be able is. to start what we want and to network with each other so we get clients. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think we're – this is a great time. It yeah. really is. Like we're very lucky to be alive in this time. Because imagine like working at some horrible factory and that's your yeah. whole life for 40 years. Like can't even imagine no, that, I right? I couldn't imagine that, yeah. Do you think that um, kind of being young at this time, does it ever feel like overwhelming that you have so many choices in front of you? Or is it exciting that you have it? So do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. It's exciting. I'm uh, really yeah, glad it's exciting. Exactly. I'm yeah. so glad. It's exciting because there's so many opportunities. And then if you fail at one thing, you move on to the next. Absolutely. Or try to play on, like, uh, take something from this, add it to this. Absolutely. Uh, like with my business, like, uh, there's a bunch of different types of marketing, a bunch of different types of business skills mm -hmm. that I'll just transition over. If one thing's not working, I'll Absolutely. move on to the next thing. And yeah. it's good because you can actually look at analytics and have an mm -hmm. idea of what's going on, right? Yeah. The technology is... It's Very incredible. Yeah. What's your favorite platform? Um, YouTube, one hundred percent. It's amazing. been around longer than most, and I would say it's still uh, one of the greater um, one of the greater platforms for good content. I would say, like quality content, because right. then you have like TikTok that'll promote pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, really? <laughs> Instagram, I like, but I would say YouTube. I, I could see YouTube being around for much longer than any platform that's around now. Excellent. Because Facebook's kind of, I feel like, dying out because it was a part of the last generation. Right. Uh, we don't really use it much. Yeah. Instagram we use, but I feel like Instagram will fade away with our generation. Mm -hmm. I feel like YouTube is here to stay. I believe so, I don't, too. I don't know how long TikTok's really going to be around. And it's, it's really across all – I know. It's so crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, kind of something that the government already tried to get rid of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of chancy, you know? Like, yeah. it may be there, it may not be there. But um, it's it's really cool that YouTube is expanding its offerings. Mm -hmm. I really feel like there's they're adding more to it, you know, shorts and everything too. It's it's kind of exciting when they come up with a whole other functionality, and then people who are you know influencers can kind of jump on it yeah. and kind of run with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's you know they sort of like eventually figure out. So yesterday I heard that. Um, like, don't chase the algorithm. Don't worry about what the algorithm is constantly chasing to. But look at what the algorithm is hunting for. Yeah. That's Roberto Black Blake that said that. So he's he does a lot of uh, kind of how-to videos on, on podcasting. And he's, he's really uh, very knowledgeable about, like, all kinds of computer and all that. He's really knowledgeable. So he's – I think he has, like, the million followers. Like, he's doing mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. And so he was saying, like, 
don't worry about the don't keep up with the algorithm. Look at what the algorithm is hunting for. Mm-hmm. Focus on that. Yeah, that's so true. Good, like you, good advice, when right? You're, when you're putting out content, you want to see what's trending now and try to play off of that. Either copy that or make your own twist on it. Like mm-hmm. if uh, that's what you've done. Yeah, exactly. Like if inst- if an Instagram reel that you see is blowing up and it's a certain sound, you can make a whole different video, but use that sound and yeah. it'll show up on yeah. that video, like on wow. the like on the trending sound, and then that'll wow. make the algorithm want to boost your stuff even more. Right, yeah. and it's good to not be the same as everyone else all the time. Anyway, it's exactly. kind of nice you to put a different. different spin on it. You want to be different because then people will watch you because they don't want to see the same people over yeah. and over and over again. I yeah. know. I can't imagine like doing a kind of a little dance or something. I don't think that that's I really can't. like I can't do that. that can't no. be like can't. super useful for like boosting. I don't. I, think I don't pass that time too. <laughs> Like, like I Maybe said before. Maybe a couple of years ago, but not anymore, right? Exactly. Like I said before, <laughs> I like I like the whole concept of putting out content that people could actually use, like, in a positive way in life. Definitely. Uh, but I feel like Definitely. just watching, like, dancing videos of people, unless you're, like, a real dancer. Yeah, sure. right. If why you're, not? Like, if you're picking a real up dancer, ideas then, to... Yeah, why not? <laughs> exactly. But, like, if you're just doing it, like, those little, like, TikTok trends... I just don't see much of a point of that. Like, it can be fun. It can but be But I don't fun. see how people make so much money from it. Like, I don't either. Like, I mean, yeah, they're popular. Of course, businesses are going to want to, you know, sponsor them because people are following them. People right. are influencing them. So it's a great business tactic. I just right. don't love seeing it spread out into the world because I feel like we should be um, seeing more, like, positive, uh, productive content instead of just this – kind of lazy mindset that we have yeah right and it doesn't really does it ever actually help anyone no. not really no you know? it doesn't is it, it, it has to... such a negative effect on society yeah yeah wow so i feel that um there's is there a way to um if people want to monetize their youtube do you have any suggestions um what they could maybe focus on or are there certain things that they could do like and also what do you have to have in your channel to begin to monetize? Um, so if if you're trying to monetize, I'll just say try to grow as much as possible in mm-hmm. a healthy way. Mm-hmm. I haven't even been monetized yet. I, I'm still working towards that. The algorithm is changing all the time. It's sure hard is. to it's hard it to get sure a is. it's hard to get a hold on that. Yeah. Um and then wait, what was your second question? So I was just wondering, uh, because a lot of people like they say, Oh, they wanna monetize on YouTube, but mm-hmm. it's not easy, is it? Like there's certain things. Do you have to mm. hit a certain something of hours or something like yeah. that? Yeah, and so that's it's, hard. Yeah, so it's 1,000 subscribers and you have to have 4,000 watch hours on your long form videos. Or they that's added maybe a few months ago, maybe a year ago, uh, for YouTube Shorts since that was added. Okay. You need to have 10 million views on that. <laughs> oh my or, God. So it's either 4,000 watch hours on long form or 10 million views on uh, YouTube Shorts. And I'm not gonna lie, if you're wow. if you're getting a lot of views and you're making a lot of content, it's not as hard to hit 10 million on YouTube Shorts. Really? It's like as it's not as hard as you would think from You'd hearing think. that, yeah. because the algorithm is completely random. And there's some videos you might get a few thousand views on. Some videos you might get only five views. It's yeah. you don't know. Eventually, I think they'll figure <laughs> out an algorithm for it. But right now, I think it's just very like sporadic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I think that you had you've had videos that have hit three million and I think even nine million. Yeah. Nine do you million, have yeah. any like how did you come up with the ideas for that and why do you think you hit that kind of success? That's a whole different level. Yeah. So the nine million view video uh, that one's on TikTok and it's a short where I'm talking about a conspiracy yeah. on the podcast TikTok. And if I'm being so transparent, I have no idea. Like I like I put so much effort in my videos, so obviously like I felt like it deserved that. Anyways, yeah, yeah. But right. in comparison to other videos that didn't get as much, I don't really know why. It just it it, it was a good topic. Uh, it got people talking, commenting, that's sharing. That's what they want. Exactly. That's what that's you exactly like. So I guess I want. just hit like a good. Um, like I, I spent I think like two hours editing that video. Wow. So once I saw it blowing up, um, it was like the night of I think it was like three hours after I posted it, it was wow. like getting the regular views. And then I looked at the app and it was like our tenth uploaded video on TikTok and it was at fifteen thousand. I'm like I run into Josh's <laughs> room, my brother, I'm like, Josh, <laughs> it's blowing up right now. 
<laughs> and then to think about how much it blew up, it was only so at much 15K. So much more than it's at, that. It's at 9.2 million right now. Yeah, and oh I posted goodness. it back in March. Yeah. And I'll have to I'm check like, it out. That's yeah, it, I was shocked. <laughs> like I, we gained pretty much all of our followers on TikTok from that video alone. Oh my goodness! Yeah, no, I I just remember wow. it was at 15k. Then when I woke up the next morning, it was at like 200k. No, I'm like, oh, you I wonder how much this will grow. The next it. morning, it was at one million. No. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> oh my God. that's insane. That's gonna be the best feeling it in was the world. An amazing what a high! I'm like, my face has been seen by that many people, and then it got to three million. I'm like. <laughs> Three million oh is God. if if it was if it were all Americans, that'd be one percent of America has seen my face. Wow! <laughs> but like thinking about it in that but way, but it's all it, over the world. I know what you're world. saying. But I know what you're I, saying. I put it in perspective. I'm like, like, so what if it was just the U.S.? That's three. <laughs> that, that's one percent of the U.S. Now it's at nine million. So that that would be three percent if it was only U.S. based. I'm like, wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good thing you did your hair cool that day or I something. Guess, like, yeah, oh I, my god, you probably went like this, and that was all you did nah, to, with your hair. No, that was not it. At all. No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But yeah, no. I I just love reading all the comments too. I don't even know oh, how many that's we had. Awesome. And like, there were a few comments that. So it was based on like how uh, long the world has been around and how long like human civilization has been Very around. Very good. Yeah. And. Uh, a lot of people, I, I remember saying like the Earth has been around for like four billion, billion. F- yeah, four billion years. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I got like hundreds of comments that, and they believed this when they said it, where they said, "Well, this guy's really talking about the Earth is four billion years old, so it's 2023. Duh, it's only 2023 years old." I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, how? Oh my god. <laughs> There's no way people think like this. I, saw, I remember seeing the first one. And oh, then, like, no. they just kept flooding in. I'm like, this is a joke. They're playing <laughs> this jokes. Is a joke. Like, I remember I, like, I replied to one of, like, there's no way you believe this. They're like, dude, are you stupid? I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm like, what? Wow. Wow. And, <laughs> well, like, I'm, it's like, so funny. I'm like, thinking, I'm like, this is really funny. This That's is, like, really there's funny. There's actually people that think, I mean, a lot of them had to be jokes. But maybe, I mean, there were hundreds. So there might be one or two. That wow. really do believe that the Earth, because you know we're in t- the haven't year two thousand twenty-three, like carbon twelve dating. Like, haven't we exactly. kind of proven yeah. things? You know, exactly. tree rings. I yeah. mean, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> there's yeah. science. There's like because yeah. science. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. But uh, I think it's probably made you um, very open-minded, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because really you can't be super close-minded unless you're just playing to a certain demographic, I guess, right? Yeah. So I think it's great that you've stayed open and that, you know, something can be fascinating and you can check into it. Um, But I think it's – do you think that controversial shows – have you had controversial shows or is your – like your audience, are they generally – Kind of with yeah, you. Yeah, when we had the Secret Service guy on, I remember a little bit of controversy. Yeah, like uh, just on some of the topics we talked about, just because it's with the government. So yeah, and yeah, then, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about certain things. Like you, once you touch into conspiracies, you're gonna get a lot of controversy. Wow. Of like, are aliens real? Uh, <laughs> did the government do this? Did uh, like do we like was there, is there was, a secret program like yeah, some kind of yeah 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 like something like that like <laughs> you're gonna get into a lot of like touchy subjects with people because some yeah. people are very passionate about yeah that stuff. yeah yeah have you ever been to area 51 no i've been well no i haven't been to that but i have been in nevada so uh did you see nearby, any anything see interesting it. or yeah i saw a ufo land no I'm just <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you no. went in and said hey how's it going exactly. have beer with them that's <laughs> how i know aliens are real <laughs> nah, uh, i didn't see anything like that interesting we just went hiking it was like a few years ago it was a family trip yeah but we stayed in that's vegas awesome. for like a night i got to see nba summer league it was fun oh, i don't know why awesome. we didn't go to area 51 though uh, it's just a drive. I mean, yeah, you and just it's like, like a get fence, to see the front. Yeah, you know, and the fence like there's like you know, do not go any farther. Like exactly. like Gandalf, you shall not pass. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think anything's <laughs> in there though. I think it's more of like a a place where they want you to think stuff is, mm-hmm. so that they can hide it. Look in a place over that here. Nobody looks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. Yeah, the aliens are probably in like a mountain in Montana or something. Yeah, right. It's like yeah. a area it kind of opens up. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any? Uh, is there any TV shows you really enjoy watching? Uh, or do you watch do you watch like visual podcasts like what do you like for fun for fun uh i'm not as into tv shows but um certain like movie genres i'm super into like i love marvel i love star wars uh tv show greatest of all time for me is friends 
100 awesome. percent awesome. which i was extremely sad to hear oh about, you must have uh, been Matthew just shocked Perry. it was yeah. a shock wasn't it yeah it was an extreme shock my i remember my mom cried because she loved friends as a kid like she loved watching them because she basically grew up with them my mom's the same age as them uh just around That's the, around shocking. the same age it's so shocking. yeah yeah. Do you think that he was um, like? Do you think he wanted to die, or do you no, think? No, I think he had a heart attack. That's my <sighs> prediction. Uh, they and... said that there were no drugs, no nothing used, because he used to have problems with like drinking and overdose and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. he would try to do that. But they didn't find any evidence of that. I just think that he's an older guy, not the healthiest guy. That maybe in the hot tub he had a heart attack and drowned. I think that's what happened. It could have been that simple. Yeah. Right? I would like to think that. That's, I would like to think he didn't take his own life. I hope I not. I don't think he did. How did the other friends react? Do you did you hear any of them talking about it? Have any of them kind of yeah. come on TV and said anything about? So um, the actors that played uh, Joey and Rachel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I for, I don't. Um, uh, Matt, Matthew. Matt, Le, Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc. And, um, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. They, okay. Jennifer Aniston. Did a huge like uh, text like she made like an Instagram post and she basically said everything that uh, wow. Matthew Perry meant to her and they were super close. I remember hearing about how close they were during the show. After the show, she helped him get off of his overdoses and oh my God. addictions and um, she was really it was a, a true heartfelt friend. post. Yeah, yeah. And then Matt LeBlanc, who played Joey, he came out and like said that he will always love him. Enjoyed the time they had together. It was a little Aww. bit shorter. Um, I haven't heard about any of the other friends coming out and saying that. Okay. I feel like it might take some time if yeah. they do it at all. Because I feel like, especially in that generation, it's uh, you don't really just think to go to social media first to say right, that that's stuff. True. It's more of a personal thing. That's like true. With us, if somebody dies, if you, somebody you dies, we will, we will go out and say it. Yeah. 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 Wow. I think that it's uh, it's a really interesting path um, that you've taken. And I think that um, really, like, there's so much that you can go into and you can shift and you can evolve. And yeah. But it's a great starting point, isn't yeah. it, at I'm, this I'm age? I'm so excited. Like, honestly, <laughs> I'm very determined. And I have, like, a clear-cut path of, like, where I'm going. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do step by step. But I know what I want to achieve. And I know what I have to do to do it. Right. Yeah. Do you feel that sometimes things come onto your path that, like, say you meet a person, Mm -hmm. and before you've met that person, you don't have any idea about maybe what job they could lead you to or whatever. So you have to meet the person first, and then then there's this other path. So do you think that sometimes we're just sort of in the right place at the right time, or we're open to something happening in our lives, and it kind of kind of comes toward us, and we can take it if we want? You know, we can kind of jump on it if we want. Um, But I feel that sometimes we don't have to know because what feels right to you, like it's going to feel intriguing or fascinating Mm -hmm. or it's going to feel like, oh, my gosh, that would totally fit into my life or whatever. And so I think that uh, you're a really good judge, actually. You're a very good judge of what feels like you. Mm -hmm. Is this me? Is this what, you know, it's because you're like you're very clear eyed. And I think that you're always going to have that good judgment is going to lead you in the right path, right? Yeah. And you have such a firm foundation with your I family. Do. Yeah, I do. So it's it's super exciting. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing where you go next. No, 2024, I'm excited. <laughs> like, I'm, I already have my goals laid out for 2024 in my room. Like, I, <laughs> I write them down every single year. Aww. And I have the goals. So I'm, like, I've achieved, uh, I think, half of the goals that I wanted to this year, which wow. I'm not, like, super proud of. Some of them I are. Or some of them but I am. Some, some of them, them might I, be I'm huge like, yeah, goals, like, right? Like if yeah, it's a some really of them are big, big goal. Like a like, certain amount of money I want to make from business. Right. I achieved that this year. Uh, the next one that I have for next year is if I achieve it, I'll be extremely happy. Unbelievable. Just because I'm setting the goal high. I thought I did last year um, when I made the one for this year because I was just starting out the business. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, I really did achieve that, huh? I see. I get, I'm like, glad you wrote back, it down. Yeah. I'm, no, I, re- I like writing that stuff down. Cause I then think it's you powerful. Because you have to be accountable. That's right. And I put right. it right next to my desk so that every time I'm wow. working, I... I see it so I can make sure that I'm doing that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because it's really easy, especially like, you know, with all of like, checking, you're, you're checking your social media or whatever mm-hmm. for work. But really, yeah. like, it ha- you have to stay on task. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. you're really good at that. I think you're really, um, like, you focus on what's important. Yeah. And so, like, you're not taking 30 years to come up with, oh, I wish I knew this 30 years ago. That's exactly. very much not you. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that I wish I would have known earlier on. <laughs> but I think that just builds the... Um, the character in yourself mm-hmm. of like learning, like the the learning character of yourself. 
You know what? Um, there's this guy, Jay Shetty. He's a coach. I know him. Okay, well, perfect. Well, I don't know him personally. But, but you know, know who I'm talking about? I, know, I follow his social media. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I lo- glad. I love him. He's very motivational. He's such a great guy. Yeah. He's such a genuinely nice person. Um, he said, I don't know if you ever saw him say this before, but he said, I am not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am. I am who I think you think I am. That's a tongue. Isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. Whoa, like that's so. That's deep. I isn't think that's it? something I would have isn't to listen it? to two or three times to like really grasp. Yeah. You know? yeah. But isn't that funny? That, so yeah. he's saying that like we are influenced by our, of by people's perception mm-hmm. of who we are. And we're sort of trying to play to that. And it's like, wow, like. We don't want to be ruled by a perception that may not even be true. Yeah. You know, so I feel like, you know, if you ever had him, if he was ever on your show, my God, that would be amazing. Imagine having Jay Shetty on your show. I want to have big names on my show. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. I I eventually want to have a team to make like the podcast content and everything because eventually I want to be able to just talk and like not have to edit, not have to post all of that, that stuff. That would be a dream. Just leave it to other people. Yeah. But still have it like my stuff. So like the the style that I would want, obviously, like I would kind of show what I would want. Maybe like You're if still- I had like some friends doing it, I would like show them how to do it. Or right. like uh, interns, employees, whatever. Do you have any uh, little cousins that you might be able to train in the uh, future? <laughs> do you have any nieces or nephews that might be like, hey, Jack, like I need a summer job or something? I and- know some, I have some <laughs> friends that actually have asked if they can intern That's like awesome. for the business. That's because, awesome. Well, it's a less professional internship too, but it does count. That's the thing is it my does. my business is a registered LLC. So once they go back to college, and they're like, hey, I did my internship for the summer. It, it counts. It and counts. That's something that hit me of like, wow, I could really do that. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. Like and I you could, get your work done because. Exactly. I can get my work done and <laughs> teach others what I'm doing. Like, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. People that's my pretty age. cool. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's amazing. Especially the editing, right? Yeah, the editing. <laughs> Please learn editing. <laughs> exactly. I think that's something that everyone needs to learn if yes. you're trying to get anywhere in the social media game is you need to learn how to edit to some extent or right. at least just like download CapCut to make uh, shorter form content if you mm-hmm. don't want to make longer form because Premiere Pro, it took me like a year to really grasp just the basics of wow. it. Wow. Like before I dropped out of college, oh I learned goodness. Premiere Pro to a T because wow. I wanted to be ready when I yes. dropped out to yes. just jump right into YouTube and, you and content did, creation. Right? I did, you yeah, did. exactly. Which yeah. is really good. I had the equipment, I had the skills. Yeah. To at least start out, and then I just kept learning along the way. Each video that I created, I would learn new things every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did were you ever shy, like not looking at the camera? Did you ever no. have no? You never I, were shy. I got more really. comfortable with the camera. I would say, like, at one point, it just felt like it didn't matter. Sometimes yeah. it would feel like, okay, it's weird to, you know, have the <laughs> there's camera people out. watching. Like, me are, right there's now. people watching me. Like, oh, <laughs> that's why I like uh, when I was vlogging <laughs> when I was hiking. I liked hiking vlogging mm. way more. Uh-huh. If I was like in a city, I would not want to pull the camera out. No, I it's wouldn't just, either. Like, like it's oh, so... hey guys, like. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a bunch of people around you and it's like, uh, I don't know. If they I... might be like giving you looks and exactly. then you're not seeing that because you're looking at the Exactly. Camera. Like a lot of people will judge you for <laughs> making content or pulling your phone out and recording you or having like a camera. Like uh, I was recording myself at the gym the other day mm-hmm. and I had headphones in. And uh, Were you there talking were the... or no? No, I was just like recording just myself, but it was obvious because I had a tripod. And these, okay. um, these two kids, kind of my age, I think. Yeah. Uh, they thought that my <laughs> headphones were playing music and I could hear them. So like yeah. when I, see, I, I set it up and they saw me, they were like, oh, look at this guy. He thinks he's some kind of influencer. He's going to recording himself. And I remember hearing that. I'm like, hmm. I let them like ramble on a little bit right, for like 30 seconds. Right. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to mess with them. And all, and then I just go, you guys like the tripod? They went silent. Oh, <laughs> like, they was, didn't think you heard they, them. They weren't being like mean. I would say no, they, weren't they weren't being really, mean. They but they were kind of like teasing. Yeah. And, like they apologized. And, and they everything. probably was, didn't think cool. you were listening. I wasn't like, mad. I just thought it was really funny because I could tell they didn't think I could hear them. And I'm like, you know what? I, do you like the tripod? And they just like looked at me like, oh, like um, they kind of didn't mean for me. you to exactly. hear that. Didn't mean for you to hear that. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad. Um, 
super glad that you had time to come here today. And um, I know it's a bit warm, so I don't want to take up a lot of your time. Oh, but no, it's fine. So yeah. glad. So glad that we had time to get together. Me too. Um, yeah. And so I'd love to be able to hire you yeah. <laughs> to help me with YouTube and of things course. like that because uh, I really feel like you're living it. You know, you're, you're not just theoretical knowledge. You know, mm-hmm. you're actually experimenting and you're seeing what works and, and reading analytics and things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, I want to learn from someone who's in the midst of it, you know, in the arena fighting, yeah. you know, like a gladiator. Exactly. And yeah, um, yeah so I'm very glad. Um, but we'll, uh, I guess I'll let you go because I know yep. you you probably, I mean, it is, it's really warm in here it and is. everything, <laughs> but you've been so very patient with me. Oh, Thank yeah. you for answering no, my questions. This. This has been really I'm fun. really glad. Yeah. It, really it was glad. nice to switch the um, <laughs> switch the roles of like I'm on a podcast yes. instead of me hosting yeah one. it's nice yeah. right yeah. And it, it's just a good feeling because uh, you know we're lifting each other up really mm-hmm. yeah. and I know that you know you really have a caring heart and so people that are you know looking to you for advice or you know just encouragement um, I mean, you're the real deal. You really Thank are. You. You're so welcome. It. And that's really important to be authentic in a sea yeah. of not necessarily authentic. So yeah. it's nice to uh, just be yourself and, you know, to do the right things with the right people um, and, and and be a shining light for others to follow because, uh, yeah. you know, you're influencing others, yeah. um, you know, and it's it's just a really we're very lucky, aren't we, to have this opportunity? Yeah, 100%. I love the generation I'm growing up in, even though there's a lot of problems with it. I feel like I stand out and, like, I'm different from others, and I like being different. Yeah. Like, I like being different, like, still working on a bunch of flaws, but everyone has flaws. Yeah, as, we all do. I yeah. think I think that you've actually, um, you don't have as many uh, dragons to wrestle as, as some other people. And yeah. so, you know, um, but also you have such clarity Um, a purpose and a vision and Mm. i I think that you know like give yourself credit a little bit i know you probably don't but please do do, i'm very hard on myself (laughs) i think you are yeah Yeah. because you have a high bar yeah no i i keep the bar high i because well actually one of the reasons i keep the bar very high is because usually you uh, you won't achieve the impossible, but if you go for the impossible, you'll get somewhere close to that. Right. So the higher you go, the more you'll get to that like bar. To, yeah. But if you say like if you try to set the bar at something realistic, mm-hmm. you might not reach that. You might reach something a little bit below that. But if you set the bar so much higher, yeah, you'll achieve so much more. I think so too. Yeah. I think it's really important to kind of just keep sort of up leveling, uh, and I really think you do that. I think you're always challenging yourself. Mm. And and that's such a good thing because, you know, you're you're improving so much like year over year. I think that you're it's like an exponential growth. It's not a yeah. you know what I mean? And and that's incredible because you're sort of like like you're cramming so much living yeah. into this life. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's amazing. So, you know, it's um, I'm really glad that you could come on and then that we could talk together and uh yeah, you know hopefully you inspire some people yeah. to maybe to, uh, go for their dreams and and you don't necessarily have to finish college because nope. you might have people in college working for you so mm, there's so many <laughs> paths to go on you don't yeah you can pave your own way at this point with anything you want to do yeah, yeah. We're lucky, uh, internet connection and a phone and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, That's like. That's all you need. And then you can start making money. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you'll be doing that. I think you'll oh, be yeah. working from Bali one day and saying, yeah, I'm here for a month. And I thought I'd chill here for a while. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to head on to, great. you know, <laughs> New yeah. Zealand or something. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> I see that for you. Absolutely. So I really appreciate you. Yeah. I, I really do. It. It's such you. a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thanks yeah. so much. Have a great time. Have a great time with your developing the new podcast and oh, continuing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll be cheering you on. I appreciate it. Thank you.